you're going to look at your feelings different after watching this video. I want to talk to you guys about something called IFS, also known as Internal Family Systems Theory. Now, a lot of times on this podcast, you hear me talk about EMDR and trauma therapy, but IFS has actually been my first love. So let me tell you a little bit more about IFS. IFS, also known as parse word, just means that we have different parts of ourselves that either get exiled when we're a child or when something traumatic happens or it pops up when we are going through our everyday life. The main thing here is we want to be in self. Now there are eight C's to self and I'll list them all right here. The sad part about it is we're never truly in self. When we are angry or we are overwhelmed, it doesn't really embody the eight C's here. What happens is one of the parts of us like anger, or an overwhelmed part takes over because they, they're serving as our protectors. Now, before I continue, I want to say, hey, 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 Conscious Crew. Welcome back to the Conscious Creative Corner Podcast. We are, we are unpacking trauma to heal your relationships. I'm your host, Sia the Transparent Therapist. These eight things that are up here, we don't really get to be in self until we practice to be this. So we want to be calm. We want to be confident. We want to be creative. That true balance comes with practice and awareness of when we're not actually operating out of self. Now we have in parts theory, different parts. Okay. If I put them in categories, we have our firefighter parts, which is a protective part. We have our managerial part, which is a protective part. We'll have our exile parts, right? Which are wounded parts that have left that the protective parts, the firefighter parts and managerial parts protect, right? Now, I wanna give you guys a brief overview of what that looks like for me because I know when someone first explained this to me and I was going through training, I was like, I do not get this. But when I was able to see the actual work in, in, in front of me, I'm like, oh my gosh. And so let's say for instance, um, there's a woman and she breaks up with her husband or gets a divorce from her husband from like of five years. Every day the woman goes into her marriage, she is is overwhelmed okay she approaches her husband after work she is yelling at him you didn't take the garbage out you didn't cook dinner you know I was working all day because her husband now has been laid off from work okay and so she's expecting these things that overwhelmed part of her comes up and it's coming up because she doesn't know how to truly address the exile part now, if we're going to fast forward in this story, maybe she goes to therapy, she goes through a immense amount of work and realize that the overwhelmed part was, was really protecting that sad part of her, who was then also protecting that exile part that looks like a part of her that is afraid of not being secure or not having security, okay? And she realized that she didn't have security and she exiled that part of her, um, that little girl part of her right when her dad left her and her mom a long time ago and so we get to these parts throughout these sessions uh once we start to unburden these parts of us because they all have a job right so the overwhelmed part's job is to be overwhelmed the angered part is to be angered right and the thing is our firefighters remember if i told you that earlier we have a managerial parts and we have a firefighter parts our firefighter parts are parts that come out when they're trying to put out the fire Right, so let's say, for instance, the, the woman comes home and she sees her husband hasn't taken out the garbage. He hasn't cooked her anything. He's just been kind of moping around doing his own thing. She then's like, oh, my God, I can't stand this. And she goes to the, the cabinet and she pulls out her oh, liquor. Guys, tell me where that's from. I don't know where that came from. I know, I know it's Martin, but I just don't know if it's from Martin or if it's from like a movie. But she pulls out her liquor. She takes a shot. Then she takes another shot, okay? That part of her that is prone to just drinking, 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 it's a firefighter part. Because what that part says is, hey, look, we can't have that exile part come out where you break down. So we're going to drink to mask what we're feeling. We're putting out the fire by drinking. Maybe she doesn't drink. Maybe she's not a drinker. Maybe she's a Christian woman, a whole Muslim, like wholesome woman. And she's not drinking, but she grabs her laptop and she's like, I'm just going to buy whatever. I'm going to just buy. I'm going to mask this by buying whatever because it makes me feel better. That is also a firefighter part. It's the parts of us that come up to mess how we're really feeling. Or this person might be binge watching Netflix. Or this person might be, I don't know, just going out doing unnecessary things. Okay. So that fire, these firefighter parts of us really do exist. Now the managerial part. The managerial parts are parts that show up usually every day when we're not in self, right? The eight C's of self. We're not in self. It's usually our managerial parts that pop up. So that managerial part might look like maybe her being bossy, right? Controlling, 
right? The way in which I like to remember these things is like if you walk into an office and you're trying to think about who's the loudest one, it's usually your supervisor, right? Who's just barking out orders. That's how he shows up every day. That's how you're showing up every day. Managerial parts don't always have to be something like super unhealthy or negative. It can be like someone being super shy all the time. That's who you present as, right? That's who your managerial part is. It's who you present as uh, on a whole. Now, again, the goal is to be in these eight C's. Calm, confident, creative, all these C's that are embodying you being at a very homeostatic level where you're able to think straight. So when you're working with someone like me through my coaching pro programs or like in my office and we're going through some of these techniques, I will actually to, to somaticize this. Where do you feel this part the most in your body? Right. So that woman that walks in and she goes and she's yelling at her husband, um, she feels the anger, or the frustration or the old woman a lot in her throat. Right. Maybe there's always a knot in her throat and she's like, oh. I feel like I can't swallow too much or I feel like I'm gasping for air. That's where it lives. And so then I will ask you to externalize it. Hey, if this part had a face, what would it look like? All right. Or if it looks like something visually that we could possibly draw, what would this part look like? And the further, the more we're able to externalize that part from you. So you no longer think like I'm overwhelmed, but oh, no, that's overwhelm. Right. Overwhelm is separate from me. Overwhelm has its own identity, is the easier it is for us to work with this part to then help to unburden it to get to the other parts it might be protecting. Now, remember, there are layers here. So that overwhelm part is not always like the very first line of defense when it comes to protecting that exiled security part from this woman, right? Or that young girl part. It, it, it could be, overwhelm could be protecting the sadness, like I said earlier, right? And so if you think about gates or different levels, right? So at the first level, right, we're on level one, floor one, we meet overwhelm. Once we unburden overwhelm and we realize that, okay, overwhelm, you're doing great at your job, but we don't really need you here anymore. It then grants us access to level two. And at level two, that's when we're realizing like, oh, wow, overwhelm was really just protecting sadness. And so sadness is here and we're like, okay, well, sadness, how can I help you to stop being sad for a little bit? Because we're never getting rid of these jobs because they're all important. They're always doing something for us. And so sadness is like, look, I haven't trust anyone in a long time. And so I'm just sad because I know it doesn't feel right for me. And so we get to know sadness a little bit. And once we get to butter up sadness and we tell sadness, like, look, go chill in the back. Go take a vacation. It's okay. We then might be able to access this exile part. Now, y'all, it's not always as easy as it sounds. Trust me, okay? It takes a lot of work sometimes for certain people to unburden the unburden their exile parts or just kind of get used to and familiar with these parts. But once we get through sadness and we're able to look at the exile part of um, this little girl who's just scared of not having security, that's when the real work happens. And so we start to unburden her. Um, and again, we're using the same example of the woman who comes home and yells at her husband. But that little girl that lives in her, who doesn't get, who never had a voice, right? Who never got to say like, wow, I felt unloved because dad left us. And it doesn't always have to be this dramatic, but just for illustration purposes, right? And so we go ahead and we help give that girl the one that is afraid of not having security what she needs what she needs to grow up and be the 40 year old woman who is no longer yelling at her husband and so those are the type of things that we do in parts work it's so powerful to look at your feelings this way because we'll no longer villainize your feelings you're no longer going to villainize your feelings you're going to actually want to get to know them right? One of the eight C's is curiosity. You want to understand what's happening with this part of you. And I talk about this all the time because we are so often told like, you cannot be angry, but y'all, Jesus was up in the Bible being angry. Okay. The thing is, we just don't have anger go down on our wrath. That's just something to remember. Okay. But don't let the sun go down on our wrath. I'm sorry. But just remember that these parts are here to protect us. They're here for a reason. They want us to know, notice that there's something going on in our body. And so I love IFS so much because it just breaks down our feelings into simple terms. And so it makes us feel a little bit more human and it humanizes us. Right. And then when you come work with me, we'll then start to work with the trauma, right? The trauma with the EMDR. And so 
crossing those two hemispheres in your brain, making it more evident so that those traumatic experiences no longer have to live in the incorrect part of your brain. Such great stuff, guys, right? And so let's say you are a fellow therapist and you're thinking like, oh, all right, I graduated, now what? I'm going to urge all of you guys, go get certified in one of these, in IFS or EMDR, all of them. All the things, them, all other things. Go and get certified because I think it just opens your eyes up to so much more than how are you feeling? Because therapy is so much more than that. Coaching is so much more than that. And that's why I enjoy being a trauma recovery and relationship coach because the knowledge that I have, it just helps so many other people understand that their feelings are their feelings and they're valid. We just have to work on the unhealthy behaviors that are attached to it. And if you feel like you're in this situation where you're like, no, I feel like my feelings are valid. Um, I'm in a relationship and it just doesn't feel right though. I want you to go check your boundaries. I have a red and green flags boundaries checklist and a 15 minute you know, workshop masterclass that you can check out and it's in the description box below. It's amazing guys, okay? I tried to pack everything in these 15 minutes that you will ever need to know about boundaries in your relationship, checking for green flags, checking for red flags, how to know if you should leave this relationship, how to know if this is the right place to be at this time in your life. And it addresses your feelings. So go ahead, look in the description box, take the free stuff, y'all. It's free. You're not after doing nothing, but click the link and go on and ting and ting, okay? There's a video that just popped up here, right? I think so. Could you click it? Go ahead and click it because it's so much more valuable information that you're going to need on your journey to healing as we are unpacking this unresolved trauma that lives in your subconscious mind to heal your relationship. Go ahead and click it, okay? All right, y'all. Walk good. Keep the vibes high. And I'll see y'all in the next episode.